yeah, the fat man in this crazy hair. You know, that's why I keep it trimmed short in the summertime because of this. The hats, no matter what you do, mess up your hair and, you, and I can comb it and comb it and comb it and never get anything. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about one of the great mysteries of the Star Trek universe. Perhaps one of the least known, the most debated, the most challenged with numerous possible answers and several revisions. I'm talking star dates. How do they keep track of date and time in the Star Trek universe? You know, we don't see a whole lot of watches and chronos. There's one or two mentions of a timepiece here or there, but you don't see a clock counting on the wall. You don't see uh, on the bridge, there isn't a big you know, digital display displaying the date and time and so on and so forth. And I imagine genetically speaking, pretty much every planetary system and or uh, member race of the Federation and outside the Federation have their own versions on keeping track of, of time and dates and they base them on the same things that we based ours on in various varieties whether it's the rotations of the planets or the time since they acknowledge that the great revision took place or uh general Borkoff conquered the blah and so on and so forth in the canon alpha canon beta canon there's a number of different takes on it and arguments on it not a hundred percent of them are you know set in stone what we do know, what I know, is from what I read that Gene Roddenberry intentionally set out not to put a timestamp on the TV series. He knew it was set in the future. He knew it was set fairly distant in the future, but not extremely distant in the future. It's not one of them, in a, you know, in a, a long time ago and a far, far, blah, 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 because both Star Wars and Battlestar Galactica have played that route. We take place, this takes place in a time and place so far distant from the current now that it's beyond fable and myth. Now, we know that this takes place X amount of hundreds of years in the Earth's near future, supposedly, right? So the original star dates were vague. Some of them were made up and they don't always jive. So from ser from episode to episode in the original TV series, you don't always have a, a cohesion of, of time passage. It is speculated and accepted in most of the Trekkie universe, if you will, that the first number represents the month in Terran. So if it's one slash something, it's going to be January of such and such. Later canon, sometime during the next generation, this becomes a bit more uh, problematic to some degree. The fan base become more demanding. They want to know an actual chronology. They want to have a timeline. They want to be acceptable timeline. So somebody arbitrarily picks a date. It's, I'm pretty sure I read that 2270, the year 2270 is roughly either the, when Captain Kirk begins his first five year run or ends his first five year uh, run on board the, uh, the Enterprise. So from that point forward, we, we have a, a chronological order that's, that's more or less in sync. So when we look at these, these five digit, six digit numbers from the old canon, they're not in sync with the newer stuff. It's just, they're not. But we figured that, I'm guessing after Gene Roddenberry stepped aside, that other people took up the, the flag and decided, okay, we're going to answer our fan base. Plus it makes sense because now we've got multiple movie multiple TV series franchises, which take place in chronological order to some degree, right? We have the original TV series and then later the next generation, which is implied to have been literally a generation later. This is why we see uh, an accelerated aged Captain Kirk and what have you. Although there's some 
vague issues there too because I'm pretty sure pretty sure uh, the episode that when uh, Star Trek uh, uh, Next Generation first initially takes off, don't we see a, a Bones McCoy at 130 odd years old or something? I have to go back and look at that first series or first episode because I might be wrong. And later we have Captain Kirk helping launch the Star uh, the, the Enterprise B and getting killed or lost or something. I think he got killed. One of them time rip, rip things that that's what allows him to be uh, timed forward so Picard can tap him many years later. We're talking 30, 40 years, 20 years, things like that, not 100 years. And then the DS9 takes place in the latter part of the first generation, uh, uh, second generation. Star Trek is the next generation. Toward the latter end of the TV series, DS9 takes place. The Dominion War basically picks up where the next generation leaves off. Voyager gets tucked in somewhere in between. But they're in time. More or less in sync. Now when Enterprise comes out, it predates the next generation by, or uh, the original TV series by 50 years? Maybe? It's not that great of a distance. And now we have Discovery. And I will grant you, I have not seen more than two episodes of the Discovery. Uh, I don't either, I don't have cable, so I can't access it. It's not on Netflix, so I can't access it. Uh, I can get bits and pieces of it through YouTube. It was being played on one of the regular channels at the very beginning, but because of my work schedule and my wife's dominating the television, I really don't have the option of watching the show. I'm of the understanding that it's supposed to be the equivalent of the era of the four-year war, which, fine, from the writer's perspective, I'm not going to pitch a, you know, I'm not going to pitch a bitch because... It's, it's violating some continuum or my uh, ideal of Star Trek because this isn't Star Wars. I guarantee you there's a huge difference. So, fine. Although, I am disappointed because there's so much pre-canon and old canon on the four-year war and what, year, what ships were there and on and on and on that, for me, I would have rather seen something more true to the original canon because I know that the Enterprise and her sister heavy cruisers were developed in the latter part of the Four Year War as a deterrent to the Klingon specifically, but to bring some serious firepower to bear. And that's a number of other ships too. And I happen to have you know, a Fassive built version of the ship recognition. Well, this would be Jane's, Jane's ships for the future right where we've got you know a number of different ship designs and types that many actually show up in later canon and some don't it just kind of helps jive what i mean by uh the writers and designers have looked at all things trek when they're looking at their next trek series or what have you so they reached into the depths of the barrel and pulled out a lot of different stuff and some of the very good stuff now we get to this discovery where they feel the need a whole new set of they put their own their own time stamp on it. They want to put their own star date on it. And I'm not a big fan of that to some degree. The radical changes for the Klingons were not, physically speaking, were not necessary. But there's precedence. We know that they've gone through several uh, changes. And depending on how it's looked, it's explained in Enterprise as a, as a biological evolutionary uh, incident that creates a whole bunch of more human looking Klingons, which fit for the next TV, you know, for the original TV series. And the old school canon, the Starfleet Academy gu uh, Guide, and of course FASA, and a number of other uh, non canon approved publications I've read over the years all said the same thing that the Klingons purposely bioengineered their own subclasses so they could have understand the human mind better to understand the Romulan mind better so it's not just the human Klingon hybrid but there's a Romulan human or a Romulan uh, Klingon hybrid as well which has mixed 
mixed results. So, the star date, as we know it, is a little bit more uniform now than it was 40 years ago. As always, this is a Batman, and I'm always willing to listen to debate, conjecture, denial, and outright, you're a liar! Whatever it takes, whatever you need, let's have a talk about it. What do you think the star dates are, how they set up? Are they now fixed against Gene Wildenberry's original wishes? Or are they just something completely, utterly alien to everything we know? Till next time, this is Star Date 11 slash 2018. Yeah? All right.